That's from the the inside of um, Trace Ombres, ZZ Top record, featured prominently in the entranceway. I'm Phil Manley. I'm a musician and recording studio owner. I live in San Francisco. This is L Studio, my studio. Oh yeah, we, well here, let me show you one quick, quick detail because I think it's worth noting. We do have an Atari 2600 hooked up to our massive plasma screen TV and it does actually work, so. It's been a studio since the 1980s. Christian Death did a lot of recording here. Um, no FX recorded here. REM recorded here. It has some history. Okay, yeah, so this is the live room. It has cork walls, at least on two of the walls, which is a funny feature, but this is the way it came. The studio was built in the 80s, and the guys who built it did a really good job. Um, it's like the control room is very well isolated. Studio is very well isolated from the outside world. We've worked in a lot of studios that have had serious environmental leakage. This does not, so, which is great. This is part of the pedal. This is my um, pedal board for Life Coach. Uh, this guy is pretty intense. This is a really crazy, harsh wah wah. When it gets to the like widest, most open, it's not at all like a normal wah. It's like the oc, oc, what do they call it? Optic sensor. Yeah, optical. Optical wah. Yeah, it's really crazy how bright it gets. It's like the end of the world kind of. And then the, that paired with the super fuzz, and then this is a Roland GR20 guitar synth. That's like where you get the you can put in like super low octave double bass, you know. It just, and through this, all this shit, it sounds fucking insane. I play in Trans Am. I have played in a bunch of other bands, including the fucking Champs. I play in Life Coach. to Oberlin College together and he was he used to live down the hall from me at Oberlin and we met because he and his roommate wanted to borrow our bong me and my roommate had a bong and he was like yeah do you want to you know you can come over we can smoke some pot and listen to fish and we were like why don't you guys come over to our room and they, they did, and we played them um, Melvin's Eggnog, which is the 10 inch record. And it was, you know, that music at that time, especially, it's still totally mind boggling, but it was totally, everyone's mind was blown. And uh, we've been friends ever since. The way I was turned on to Earthquaker was through John Theodore and his. At his studio, yeah, there was a stash of Earthquaker pedals there, and I would tool around with those. Uh, this is a great pedal, the Prescription Electronics Experience pedal, which has the swell function. Have you ever heard this pedal? 
Dude, it's insane. It's totally like, it's kind of like the super fuzz and when you know when it's on, it's like really, really bracing fuzz. What other no notable, oh, this is a really good one too. The Fox Tone Machine clone. I think this came from a kit, like a build your own clone or something. But this is really, this has the octave fuzz switch and then the on off fuzz. Um, or the buzz box. This was, uh, yeah, it's like a really hard square wave clipping pedal. Have you ever heard this? Oh, it's is really that, nuts. It's the Buzz Osborne one? Well, yeah, and I don't think that he actually had anything to do with the development of this pedal. Yeah. Like, they, they just sort of like... You're on DGC. Yeah, used, they used his name maybe even without his permission. I could be wrong. I don't know. But um, it's really like, it sound, makes everything sound like it's broken. It's like, which is, you know, can be cool. Um, oh yeah, by the way, the Melvins recorded Ozma, their second album at L Studio. Just saying. I feel like I should say that. Do you want to see all the tape machines? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. Um, this one's fun. This is my Otari MM, or sorry, MX5050, which came from Johnny, um, Johnny Cola, who played in, uh, or plays in Huey Lewis and the News. He was one of the song, primary songwriters and arrangers. And they used this to demo all of the Huey Lewis records. Uh, it's half inch eight track, so the tracks are pretty compressed and it, it's easy to overdrive the tape and it has a really good rock sound. Okay, this is my favorite tape machine that we have, which is the Ampex MM1200, um, which is two inch 16 track. Um, just the best sounding tape machine I've ever heard. This is like when we bought this board, the guy, he was like, you have a truck. Here, I'll just give you this. <laughs> so he gave us a tape machine and it sounds insane. This uh, phase scope, these Duro's loudness meters and a test set, which is like an oscillator built in with the meters and all that stuff, which is, it's good eye candy for, for clients. Here, I can show you. Let me, let me give you a taste. This isn't the most stereo image, but. Okay, yeah, I'll show you the amps. Um, this is the loudest amp in the universe, the Marshall Super Bass. Last year they made them in 1980, I think. But yeah, I played this in Trans Am and I don't know. This is what I use as half of my rig in Life Coach. The Trainer Bass Master, the, they call it the Plexi Killer. I feel so douchey even saying that. <laughs> But it is, and it sounds killer, and you can buy them for like 250 bucks. High watt, you know, melt your face loud, 50 watts. I got this from Isaiah, Isaiah Mitchell. He came into a large quantity of amps all at once as part of a lot that was being sold, and he hooked a brother up, and that, yeah, this is like, this is definitely, you can be the loudest guy at the gig even with just this 112 combo. It's so fucking loud. Um, Sun concert lead, solid state head, kind of works. <laughs> it's, it's a little weird. I don't know. But the cabinet's great. And it's a 412, yeah, with Celestion 75s. Um, Isaiah used this on the Earthless record, and I've never heard it sound so good. That's just. But he's a, he can pick up a tennis racket and make it sound good. It's funny, a lot of my amp collection is based, is predicated on the idea that I was, I was a touring musician for like 25 years, where like the drummers were loud, really loud, and you had to keep up with the drummer, right? And now I find myself touring less and working in the studio more, and I've gotten really into using really small amps like the Fender Champ.
Um, I gotta piss. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>